Hello, my name is Tom Kessler. I helped organize the Wilderness Mountain Society elective in Wilderness Medicine in February each year in East Tennessee. As part of that course, we're quite interested in teaching acute life-saving skills, and one of those is the treatment of anaphylaxis. With the advent of the EpiPen, it's become the standard for treatment. In the wilderness setting, though, it's possible that the situation would require more than a single dose, which is not the way the pen was designed. So a number of us have worked on ways to access the epinephrine in an EpiPen, and we'd like to talk about that today. Now we're going to review here a little bit closer up. The unused old style pen is this device. It has this spring compressed in this space in the pen. The cap on the pen is holding these metal arms apart. When you arm the device by removing this, and you push on the end, it pushes up and squeezes and releases and the spring pops it down and that's how it works. Quite an interesting and sophisticated engineering device. This is an unused EpiPen. We could, if we didn't have a multi-tool, Carl Weil of the Wilderness Medicine Outfitters in Colorado actually is the one who came up with a way to do this. But you could cut through along this space between here and here with a knife and that will allow this to release with quite a bit of force. So you don't have a jacket or a sleeping bag or a shoe, something to catch this when it pops out so it doesn't fly around. And then the, the epinephrine can be removed for the additional doses as needed. So let's arm our device. And if you have a very small Tool, you can put it in the end and work it this way. You have a larger tool from the sides. We're just going to kind of see if we can get this to open up here. And that allows us to remove the epinephrine. Now the spring on this device has not uh, been ex expanded because we didn't push in on the device. This is the old style pin. We'll take the end off, drop the device out, and before we discharge it, let's take the wrapper off and look at the pin from the inside. So we'll cut down here at the knife, get it started, see if we can peel this wrapper off. And you can see the components, the spring housing, the spring, the plunger, the epinephrine, and this is the business end. So we'll now discharge this one into the device. And I'm going to uh, plunge it into the end of this so we can see how quickly the epinephrine is expelled. And just that fast the epinephrine is injected. With this device, we now have an exposed needle. Because the needle is exposed, we have to be extra careful, which means body substance isolation. You'll recall that we just used the plier function of the tool to loosen and remove the end, which is swedged in right along here. So if we cut right here, the spring will pop out as the device is released. So we'll begin cutting right here, cutting down to the white plastic underneath, knowing that the flat end is going to be expelled by the spring as soon as the plastic is cut through. And it's about to go. So that would be the way we would access the device. And you can now see the red plungers pushed in, and that's how it expels the epinephrine. If we had no alternative in a desperate situation, we could point the needle up, 
pull the plunger back to the same distance it was on the unexpelled epinephrine, then invert the device, and we could inject the second dose with the bubble. You can see there are probably an additional three doses of epinephrine in this syringe available, and each time we could take the plunger, well, let's see, let's go ahead and just inject one. You'll see it come dripping out here. Be a second dose. We can invert the device, bring in more air. We could get a third dose. You can see that it takes a little longer to inject with the bubble because of the bubble is compressible and the epinephrine is not. And a third dose. And probably each dose getting a little bit smaller, but I think not clinically significantly so. So you can see we have one dose designed to be injected and perhaps as many as four additional doses available in the syringe on an emergency with no alternative. And now with the new style pin, we'll review again the mechanism. This orange device inside holds the epinephrine containing syringe in this position, the entire thing fits inside the housing. As you see it in the, uh, the pin. The spring is in this part of the syringe in this device. Is the housing and it is caught in position by these three little triangles. So when you're going to remove the mechanism, when these triangles release, then the spring will release and now things pop. You want to be ready for that, and after the device is used, it looks like this. So you can see that the orange housing has moved down and now covers the needle. So after you discharge the device, the needle will still be covered. So let's proceed to discharge the device and see what we can do. Yeah, all right. Uh, just for comparison, we'll take this out. Actually, this has a little ball in it. This is the unused syringe. This is the fully discharged syringe. So you can see if we're going to draw air into the device, we want to bring this back to about here, to its original position. Okay. Here's the device. And for review, let's take the cover off. So we can see the mechanism, the spring housing, the place where the white housing is connected to the gray outer housing, the syringe, and notice it's up next to the white here. And we're going to discharge this and you'll see it. So we'll arm this, which allows the end to compress, and we will discharge it again. you can see that this orange has now advanced down to here and covers the needle. To take the remaining epinephrine out of the device, we'll need to loosen up these. And it's probably easiest done by cutting part way down on each side and then using the tool to remove it. So let's cut it down each side. Being careful not to uh, dislodge those three pieces because as soon as we do, it's going to come flying out. just about got this one. And if we didn't have a multi-tool, we could cut 
between these three pieces and the end here like we did before and it would eject itself. But uh, Carl Weil's technique with the multi-tool I think is indeed much safer. So if you have one, I would certainly think we should use it. So we'll cut down this side also. Until we get to the end, if you have a narrow device, you can put it in the end here and maneuver it in this way to get the device out. And as we lever it around, we'll be able to loosen it and take it out. If we didn't have one of these smaller tools, we could use a larger tool and let's just peel this back a little bit like this to make it easier and then we could access the small hole with the multi-tool and have a little less resistance. It's free on this, there we are, on the other side. And in a similar manner that we did the other side, we now have our syringe. Needle is covered, well, almost covered. This is the unused for comparison. So you can see that we have to remove the plunger just enough to bring the black to this position in the syringe by pulling in air. So we take the plunger off, hold it up, pull back on the device to have the same dose. And if we had to, with no option, we could use this for the second dose of epinephrine. If there was an re ongoing reaction, that's the second dose. The third dose. Notice how it's coming out more slowly because the air compresses. You want to be sure you hold the device in the full recommended 10 seconds. Fourth dose. And even a little bit, not quite a complete dose, for a fifth dose. In a wilderness setting with anaphylaxis, it's best to know all your options. The best option is to have an EpiPen for each requirement. If that's not the case, with a multi-tool or even just a knife, it's possible to ex access additional epinephrine, which in many situations could be life-saving. We hope this is helpful. We'd like to thank Roan State for their support and also the Wilderness Medical Outfitters for their original creativity and interest in this subject.